You love your weekly dose of bacon as my podcast, but you need even more bacon. Well, just go over to baconismypodcast.com. You can engage even more with us over there. It's a pathway to our music, extra content, our social media pages. Most importantly, grab yourself some pretty sweet swag and put it all over your body parts. Again, that's baconismypodcast.com. Listen to some tunes, pick up some merch, and tell us, what's your bacon? Bacon, put it on everything? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I don't even know what it tastes like. Bacon! Bacon is my podcast! Bacon! Bacon, bacon is my podcast! Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Bacon is My Podcast. This is Jimmy G. I am Mike Wayman. We are Bacon is My Passion and we are here today with cosplayer Lenny, Lainey Fenny. What's hey, going yeah. on, dude? What's up? So, yeah, like you're pretty well known. Well, like in terms of like the cons and stuff like that, it was funny. I was talking with a friend of mine who, you know, was talking, we were talking about who's coming on the show and stuff like that. And I brought your name up and uh, he's like, you know, I don't know. That's kind of sounds familiar. I'm not sure. And it turns out that he took a picture with you like four or five years ago at a con here on Long Island. I was probably Supergirl at Long Island. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I met. I met all the Justice League there. It was amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, yeah, I noticed when I when I started kind of doing research for the interview and and stuff. Once I looked you up, I've seen that Supergirl photo, uh, the one where it's kind of like the Empire um, magazine cover. Yeah, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, I, I had seen that uh, a number of times before, and I was like, "Holy shit! Okay, cool. I know who this is. <laughs> I, I've seen her. I've seen this photo, which is a great photo, by the way." Um, and I wanted to ask you, like, uh, I read an interview you were talking about, like, you don't like the term professional cosplayer, right? Yeah. So what what is it, like, what, why do you dislike the term professional cosplayer, but what makes a professional cosplayer in the mind of a cosplayer versus, like, in the mind of somebody who's not one? What do you think that distinction is? I think that's why I don't like the term professional cosplayer, because it's, like, we're all kind of just at least starting out, you just are kind of doing it as your hobby and it's fun and it's what you're passionate about. And then like, I guess some people turn it into, I mean, a lot of people turn it into a job. I haven't really turned it into a job, which I guess is why I'm not a professional cosplayer. Um, But I don't know. I just think it's like, I think we're all professional cosplayers. Like whether you make like a closet cosplay or you work a year on your cosplay and spend thousands of dollars on it. Like, I think we're all just, professional I, I think that like puts you in a different category saying like i'm better than someone who's not a professional right. yeah. player do you think That's... it takes um do you think that distinction takes some of the fun and like whimsy out of it yeah um because i started doing conventions where they paid me to go to it or people paid to meet me or whatever mm. um it became less fun. <laughs> it became more like a right. second career and I already have a career. So I was kind of like, I don't know if I even want to do this anymore. Like I started doing this just to hang out with my friends and be weird and nerdy. And now it's like, I have to put on a show and get paid to do this. And I don't know. It's just. That's interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Because like, I, I can see that. I, um, it kind of like, there's a parallel there with, with being a musician music. and stuff. Yeah. Cause mm-hmm. you start out because you just love it. And right. you want to do it. You want to get with your friends and you want to make noise and all this. Yep. And then um, you start going and doing it and people start appreciating what you do and they appreciate it for what it is. And and you get to still do what you want every time. And and then once you start getting paid for it, it's like, oh, now I have to dress up like this person because that's <laughs> what you're hiring me for. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I could see that taking like some of the, maybe some of the art out of it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you so, you start like you start making costumes based off of like what you think the public wants to see or like what like who the the, the celebrity is going to be at the convention like so you're like oh well is it is there going to be a justice league person here actress here like i better dress up like justice league characters even though maybe i wanted to do right. a video game character this time like it's yeah it's start it's it's stressful <laughs> and it's a lot of work it's a are lot more like, fun uh, to do it for fun are there like are they are there cosplay sellouts are there like do, <laughs> do you have like the people that like do it and then you're like oh they don't even i liked them better when they didn't care you know and like then they're the, like i don't know like again i'm trying to draw a parallel just in the music side of things where I, you know that that term which is so lame anyway you know what i mean but yeah it's just funny to me like the communities have to be somewhat similar because you guys all know each oh, other, yeah. you're all friends and everybody's kind of going and doing this thing mm -hmm. um for fun and then you see somebody that's that's uh always dressing the same way and stuff like that do you, do you think ever anybody ever gets like that oh look it's oh it's it spider gwen again <laughs> <laughs> It is it is ruthless and it's just like music because I have a lot of musician friends too and it's just like it's like cutthroat like it's right there are like people who are like hoity toity just like they're like hoity toity musicians and mm -hmm. it's like it's very clicky and it sucks that it gets like that but I don't I don't even know how it gets like that it just does because I think it's like the the Instagram follower account too it's like oh. As yeah. soon as you get past like fifty thousand followers, it's like, oh, you're a professional cosplayer right, now. Right. <laughs> now you now you're a brand. Yeah. yeah. I, I I feel like that whenever I walk into like there's a comic book shop right up the block from me. And uh, you know, listen, I love comics. I love comic books. I've loved them when I was a kid and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I'm I'm older now, but like I walk in there and I go to like the the graphic novel section and all these dudes like playing magic cards or whatever it is they're looking at me like look at this noob like what is he doing <laughs> and that's what i feel i feel like a, an outcast and it's like weird no, judgment I'm one, yeah. of, I'm one of you, <laughs> you. i am a nerd too well can, no, uh, can you imagine what it's like being a female in this well not so much anymore oh. but as long like so i've been doing this for like probably seven years six years now in the beginning when it like wasn't cool it wasn't cool to be a cosplayer like it wasn't oh, yeah, cool absolutely. it wasn't cool to be nerdy when i was in high school and i was a nerd and had no friends but like now it's cool right and as a female at least you get the like uh well what if you read these comics then can you tell me the entire story arc line from the beginning from the 1970s until 2021 oh, future state blah 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 and it's like right, okay right. yeah sure <laughs> well, the, the what you do, what a lot of people notice about your cosplay stuff is you do a lot of like gender bender kind of stuff. Where, yeah. Like the like the Aquaman and, and things like that, that that's kind of kind of become your thing now. Right. Like, I, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of other stuff, too, but now. But yeah, you were kind of um, like yeah one like, of the first yeah, to the, kind the of Aquaman, do it. Aquaman, the man who laughs Joker. There's there's a lot of really cool ones that are that gender bending besides Supergirl. Yeah. Um, so Supergirl though is actually supposed to be not Supergirl. It's supposed to be like Man of Steel. So it's still okay. gender bending. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I I think there's two reasons for that. One, I always like quote unquote boy things over girl things. Like ever since I was a child, like I don't know. I thought I was the Phantom of the Opera. Like I thought I was Michael Jackson at one point. Like. I was dressed up like Phantom of the Opera instead of like Christine Daae. Um, <laughs> and the other is that like it cosplay is very competitive and um, there's only so many women like in the comic books. And right. if you go to a convention, literally everybody is Harley Quinn, Spider Gwen, right. uh, Black Cat. So it's like you got to think outside the box and try to be like, well, what could I make that no one else has made yet? Which is nearly impossible now. <laughs> but, oh, well, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's all. It's always just kind of like who I feel connected to a lot, I guess, in the comics, and I just, I don't know. 
What when you uh, first started getting into comics? Like I also know you're a, you're an avid gamer. Um, which came first? Was it becoming like a video game nerd or becoming a comic nerd, or were they both kind of happen at the same time for you? Um, I was definitely a video game nerd um, first. Back as like as a kid, um, like anything on N sixty four. It's pretty much right. all I did. N sixty four, and then I guess PlayStation. A lot of Tony Hawk. A lot of just anything on N sixty four. So definitely gold, video gold. game nerd. And then I like kind of transitioned into like comics, and I stopped playing video games because you can only do one. You don't have that much time. Um, <laughs> That's true. So, but now I kind of do both, I guess, whenever I have time. I only really play like Assassin's Creed right now. Is, I, I can only play one game. Like I, I work full time. Are you playing and, uh, Valhalla, the new one. Yeah. Or, yeah. How? How? Yeah. Like, what's your what's your opinion? I've heard various things, and I haven't played it yet. Um, it's just very different from all the other ones. I think. Um, I haven't gotten very far. It it looks a lot better than all the other ones. Um, yeah. and it's a lot harder. It, it requires a lot more like skill in gaming than just like running around and assassinating people. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I like it. I haven't gotten that far though, but it looks really awesome. I haven't finished Odyssey yet. So I, I still, I was like making myself wait. Yeah. Then I, yeah. Then I, then I fell into ghost of Tsushima and that's a rabbit hole that I just stayed in. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. I, I I have uh because I never had N64. I, I was a PlayStation oh. guy. Yeah. Totally yeah. missed out. I know. You I know. I, I mean, I always go to friend I'd go to friends' houses and of course there was the Golden Eye. I was gonna say you never played Golden Eye or like Mario no, Kart? No, no. Oh man. Well, see, so now I got I actually got a, a an emulator, a Raspberry Pi emulator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, my wife, she's you know, she's always very like timid about playing video games. Like I, I, I brought out my old Sega once and she was, Oh, do you have NBA Jam? And then she was like jamming buttons and she <laughs> she was a total gamer at that point. Yeah. Little did I know she was all about N64 and and you brought up Mario Kart. She's a different person. Like yeah. she's a my, completely different person. My girlfriend she, as well. Yeah, she yeah. she was trying to get the kids to play it. And uh, and they just were not doing too well. My my daughter's like she's four, so you know she's kind of bumping into the walls and stuff. And Jen's yeah. just, Jen's just like give me give me the, give me the remote. Give, <laughs> just, give, yeah. give, give throwing, it to me now. Throwing elbows into the kids. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna so, say Mario Kart brings out the anger in everyone. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Was, Mario Kart is is the creator of so many rattly shaky controllers. Oh yeah and yeah for shaky, sure. You get that rattle rattle out because man. Yeah. You just ah that that Mortal Kombat, I would say. Mortal Kombat too, yeah. The reason yeah, why yeah. this the friends that would spam you with trips. <laughs> oh yeah. fuck those guys. <laughs> the button is smashing your... that has happened on my controllers for Mortal Kombat. Oh yeah. <laughs> Replaced many a controller. <laughs> Uh, do, does your Mario Kart record still stand? You, you had said, uh, again, I read an interview with you and you had said nobody beats you. Yeah, nobody can beat me. If I can be Yoshi, nobody will beat me. That was my next question. Since since you're a Mario Kart aficionado, uh, <laughs> who's your favorite character and what's your favorite pickup weapon? <sighs> well, definitely Yoshi. Um, I don't know. I don't know any of them. The red shells, probably. No, I guess the lightning bolt, but like that's kind of cheating to begin with. It doesn't matter. It's, it's there. not cheating if it's, it's there. there. It's, there. <laughs> like it's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably the lightning bolt. There's always there's always the one that like when when you you're you're the most happy to get it. Once lightning you, once bolt, you hit it, lightning it goes, bolt, or like, the yes! star. But if you get the star, then you're like all over the place, and you like start going crazy. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, know. I almost feel like that's a handicap in a, in a way. Yeah, and then you like go flying off the rainbow road or something, and you're like, "Oh right. shit, how'd that happen?" Exactly. I like, I like the red shells. I'm a, I'm a fan of the red shells. Yeah, when yeah. they spin around you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I like the shields. Yeah, yeah. You know? Shields are great. Yeah. And I can aim and shoot somebody with. Yeah. Right. I, I Jen Jen is all about toad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't really have a a a, a person. My Mary Girl, Girl, girls like toad. Really there. Girls like toad because she's cute. Yeah, I guess he is kind of cute. Yeah, that was yeah. cute. I'd give it to him. All right.
we got to take a quick time out. As you can probably tell by now, Jim and I, we're t-shirt guys. And we're always, always looking for the most comfortable and best fitting t-shirts possible when it comes to ourselves or our merch. Sometimes they're soft and they unravel in a few washes. Sometimes they're durable, but they feel like sandpaper on your nipples. And it's just not our thing. Well, well, maybe it's Jim's thing, but it's definitely not my thing. And, you know, sometimes you clean your shirts and from sweating uh, at work or on stage, they just kind of get all funky even after you clean them. Well, Fresh Clean Tees is a solution for all all your t-shirt woes with multiple styles and colors they keep you looking so fresh and so clean go to baconismypodcast.com click on the sponsors tab and click on the fresh clean tees link and start looking great and feeling great without spending a fortune again that's baconismypodcast.com click on the sponsors tab then scroll to that fresh clean tees link to start looking comfortable and stylish at affordable prices. Um. So, uh, what other any are you into any games as much as Mario Kart? Anything new that you're really into besides? Well, you said you're just playing Assassin's Creed right now. Anything yeah. else you're kind of looking forward to? Um, Did you manage to score five? PS to what? No? Did you manage to, to score PS five? Oh no. Um. What do I have now? I don't, so I, no, I use Xbox. I'm not a PlayStation person anymore, okay. um, <laughs> but I don't know which my boss just gave me his like, so it's not the newest one, but so whatever the one came before that, the X something, yeah, I don't know, whatever. Series X yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. That's what I have now. So I feel like, I feel like Xbox PlayStation is almost like DC Marvel. Yeah, we're like yeah. PlayStation is the Marvel people and Xbox is the DC people. Yeah, because um, they they kind of talk the same way to each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only reason I wanted PlayStation was to play. I think yeah, God of War is the one that's only on PlayStation, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why I wanted it. But I don't know. I'm just. Yeah, I was I was God of War, Spider Man. Um, those are the ones that kind of like I was like, oh man, looks like I'm a PlayStation guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those games yeah. kill it. I, mean, so, I don't know. So, so, since we touched upon the DC Marvel thing, we know that you're Team DC. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, That's a hard yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, however, if you had the option to bring one Marvel character, hero or villain, over to the DC universe, Thor. What do you think could at Thor. Oh, look at that. Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> You've been asked this before, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a common one for see for me. So what about Thor? What why why him? Um have you ever read any Thor comics? Uh a lot of Thor comics, yes. They I am are a comic book nerd. I feel like I feel like Marvel comics, I feel like I'm just gonna dig myself a hole with this one. <laughs> There are no wrong answers on this show. I feel like Marvel comics are like for the kids. Like nothing dark ever really happens in them. And DC comics are like, I like dark things. <laughs> I like reading dark things. I like dark music. Like I like dark things. So like all the Batman, most DC comics are like, have some kind of dark undertone to them. So I think. A lot of real for, consequences too. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. And they're more like real world as opposed to like. I don't like Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, you cut me deep. Cut me, cut me deep, lady. Wow. <laughs> your kids. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I can't get it. But, it, but if have like, you? Have you ahead. ever? Have you ever seen uh, or read Spider Man Rain? No. Oh man, that's a good one. That's really messed I up just, too. I just, I don't know. I'm sure there are like darker Spider-Man things. But I, just, I, I may, just... I may send you, I may email you a, uh, a, a, like a link to a copy of uh, Craven's Last Hunt because Ooh, yeah, it is a, a fantastic storyline. Okay, uh, but I, I, I definitely hear what you're saying. Like there is a lot of that. It does feel that way. And then when you get into the MCU and stuff like that, it kind of feels that way. Yeah. yeah. Too. Marvel is very brightly colored. Marvel yeah. is very like. Uh, there's there's that like 
you're making this to sell toys. <laughs> yeah, right. And <laughs> and that's why that, that's why the public loves the Marvel movies more because it's like right. they do what the public wants. And I just yeah, don't well, I don't even really like any of the any of the Marvel movies except for Thor because <laughs> Chris Hemsworth. Um he is dreamy. Thor. I love Asgardian Valkyrie shit. I love it. Well, yeah, that the the whole mythology is there. The Norse yeah. mythology is is yeah. uh, something to draw on. That's that's pretty awesome to begin with, and also like Ragnarok is just brilliant. Yeah, yeah, all general. the way around is so good. It was great. So good, pretty great. So you brought up uh, dark music. So yeah. this guy just recently mm-hmm. got into Architects. Yeah, and I know you're a big fan of Architects as well. Yeah, just within the last uh, maybe maybe a month ago, yeah, uh, something like that. I was just kind just of because... looking through. I just found him on some UK charts in my on my Spotify because I was I was going to see what was happening over there. <laughs> <laughs> for for those of you that are listening, she is <laughs> just you've only heard of them in the past month because they came up with a new record that like hit. Yeah, someone. Well, someone was someone was promoting it, and that's and so I heard it. But Um, like, but like, it's not the best album. No, no, absolutely not. I I did a deep dive and I went back and uh, but like when I find a band, like I'll I'll dive into them and and I love the style and I love the music and I love the sound and you know like I I also I love dark music I love heavy music I love uh but but I came up really along like more of a punk side of everything so. I find a lot of um, stuff. Mike lets me hear a lot of, like, we introduce each other to a lot of music and stuff. But this one I found on my own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, I could have sworn I, I I sent you something. Maybe because I, I I like to my friends. I always send Doomsday as like, here's an intro to to this. Band. <laughs> you should listen to this. Right. That's and, what uh, I do too. You should listen. Really, to yeah. Doomsday. <laughs> <laughs> This is really good. If you like this, keep going. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So what are what are some of your favorites that you've uh, tried to turn your friends on to? Or that you've gotten to turn your friends on? My friends, friends to? will not listen. I don't have any friends that will listen to the same music that I like at all. <laughs> I pretty much, like I'm friends with a lot of the bands that I listen to, and it's kind of mm-hmm. like just left at that. And like Anybody else that I'm friends with that are not in those bands, they refuse to listen to any of that kind of music. So it's just it's just mean. Yeah. <laughs> so right. Well, you know what? I have a lot of a lot of friends at work and and they'll walk past my desk and they'll be like, oh, devil music. And it's like, no, it's yeah, not, devil it's music. Yes, but it's good. Yeah. It's good. Um so yeah, I'm with you. I, I get it. Luckily, luckily I, I I have a bunch of friends that like to make the same type of noise with me. So yes, yeah. that, is, that is true. Well, Consider us friends that will listen to music that you uh, suggest. So do you have Perfect. any suggestions for us? What are what are like the, the top couple that pop into your head that you think people might not know about that should? Other bands? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I guess I'll just name my favorites. The Acacia Strain has been my favorite since I was like 12. <laughs> I don't know how or why. <laughs> Um, Whitechapel. Cool. Good band. Yeah, I know them. Uh, Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows who they are. Yeah. Um, you probably got to be it's on TikTok nowadays. You know who Bring Me the Horizon right, is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thy Art is Murder. Um, who else do I listen to that I, who, um, I don't know. I listen to a lot of pop punk too, though, and a lot of like, old like hardcore music kind of like have heart guns up like i don't know down to nothing i i kind of i guess i listened to more pop punk back in like when i was a kid and then i kind of just like evolved into like i don't know the gateway the gateway yeah. drug to hardcore. <laughs> right. That's, that gets you into scene music. That's... You start you start with something that makes you pogo, and then all of a sudden, like someone screams in the background, you're like, oh, I like that sound. And that I, is cool. And I hate yeah. things. And yeah. Like, <laughs> follow that down. 
Or yeah. it was like it was like Christian metal, like under oath. It's like, oh, okay. Well, as long as it says it's Christian, then I'm I can right. Then it's this. then it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to say, Christian metal has come such a long way because I remember, um, like I I had a couple of friends when I was in high school that were that that's all they were allowed to listen to. Like yep. if they were gonna listen to rock, it was gonna be Christian rock. And I can't remember the names of the bands that they always tried to have me listen to. Um, but when I was, you know, when I was that age, I was like, I don't want to hear your Christian rock, stupid church music. Right. Like I, I, <laughs> I was too, way, I was way too badass. Yeah. Still, like, like, I guess, well, I guess August Burns Red is technically. Well, yeah, well, they were, yeah. they, they started out as they were, they were yeah. one of the ones that kind of like started that to me, Christian rock used to be like, um, like when you go to like a Walmart and you, you go to the cologne aisle and they have like that. if you like this cologne, you'll really like this one for eight bucks. And so it was like Christian Rock was like, if you like Guns and Roses, you'll love Tourniquet. <laughs> And it was like, I don't think I'm going to love Tourniquet. That's the value <laughs> brand. Gonna... <laughs> that's the value brand. Right? And that's what I felt like it was until bands like August Burned Red, uh, Under Oath, Under Oath. Was another oh, one yeah, where it was that. like, you heard him and and it was just like, holy shit. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, yeah. All right. And what's cool about like Under Oath, they, they don't necessarily, they didn't necessarily tour when they were officially Christian. Right. right. They right. didn't tour with those types of bands. So like, it, that's, that's when I got to learn about like, Madeline Maybe. and the Sons of Disaster and Maylene, uh, Maylene and the Sons oh, of Disaster. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and love that band. Yeah, I've, I've seen, you know, even though I knew them before that, they played with uh, Every Time I Die and, and right. stuff like yeah. that. So that was cool that it wasn't like just kind of segregated off to that. that you know what? Like, Under Oath is playing. Um, they're playing. Uh, they just announced a tour. Like they're one of those festivals that's in this in September or in the summer or something. Yeah. Under Oath is going to yeah, be on. A lot of people are. They're on the same one that um, we just interviewed somebody that's that's on that show, and I can't remember which band. <laughs> I can't remember is which... it Outline in Color? I don't think it's Outline in Color. One one of the one of the people that we we just recently interviewed, and I'm I'm getting them mixed up, but they're also on the show. And I was reading the thing. And it was, like, was one of the bands. Um, no, it's not. No, it's not rivals. Um, I don't know, but yeah, there's a lot of people on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, which is cool. I mean, I think that's, I think that's awesome. I, I can't wait for shows to start happening again. Yeah. Same thing yeah. with cons. Like how, how is, how has that been? Um, are are you starting to book anything now? Are you looking at booking anything now? I mean, I know like, you know, the um, world's starting to not be a, a desolate wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> I've booked a couple, but I, but the thing is, like, I booked, but like, I don't ever know how. Like, they don't ever know when it's actually going to happen. So, right, exactly. like, I have one in somewhere in uh, Rome, I think. They're all like European cons, or like, uh, like one in Peru. They're all like yeah. not in this country cons that have been contacting so me. Hey guys, I got a quick question for you. Are you dog people? If you know anything about us, you know that here at Bacon's My Podcast, our dogs are our family members, right? Uh, we love to give them a little something extra to look forward to every month, get them excited, and that's why we subscribe to BarkBox. So every single month, Bruce, Bane, and Bruno are treated to two brand new durable toys, plus like uniquely curated packs of treats. It keeps them excited, keeps them engaged. And uh, you never have to like go out shopping for stuff. So if you have a four-legged furry friend that is your favorite alliteration, we got a special deal for you. Just for being a Bacon Is My Podcast consumer, if you head over to BaconIsMyPodcast.com and scroll to the sponsors, click on the BarkBox link, you'll get an extra toy in your first order from BarkBox. So head over once again, BaconIsMyPodcast.com, click on the BarkBox link, and spoil your favorite four-legged furry friend today. More alliteration. What's your bacon? How awesome has that been to be able to parlay your love of like comic books and dressing up and doing this into something that allows you to kind of like travel the world and, and book something in Rome? Like, so, how did that come about? Yeah, I kind of have mixed feelings about this because... okay. If you 
I mean, it's awesome. Like, and especially if you go, if you go internationally and as a, as a cosplay guest, um, they treat you differently than they treat you here as a guest. <laughs> like they make, they put you on billboards like outside right. of the building and they like make, they have like a team that's like dedicated to you that has like your name on it. And they like give you like a security guard and like a translator wow. and like wow. they give you like all this, like they treat you like a celebrity. Yeah. And they like give you all this food and it's kind of amazing. Um, but here it's just kind of like, here's your table and you can put your thing here. Or you can put it up if you want or like whatever. We it's provided cool. you with <laughs> yeah. a case of waters and some quest bars. Oh, it's not a, even that. Very... It's literally just a table. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very American. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like when we play places, it's like right. you don't get any tickets. No. <laughs> There's water. a there's a Gatorade cooler of just water right, yeah. that's been sitting yeah. there for four days. You can have some of that. There's no yeah. ice. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Even my like my friends who are musicians, like when they go play in in Japan or Europe or Germany or any other country other than here, like their fans are so much more. What is the word? They're more passionate. fanatic. They're more yeah, they're yeah. more passionate yeah. about music. Appreci appreciative. Yeah, appreciative. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's that's yeah. I've experienced that and it's extremely true. Like it's yeah. it's such a different experience. Um, I, I same thing with um, just being treated like like a celebrity, somebody taking care of you or paying attention to what you might need at any moment in time versus right versus not here here is like <laughs> not that yeah here is like dance monkey right it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like i'm paying you so here you go um right right exactly yeah. i paid you for eight hours but can you stay for 10 and i'm not giving you anything else yeah and when you do international they like they like ask you to come the day, a day or two before the convention so they can like take you on a tour of their country and like show you all the great things about their country and like yeah so where what's um what's some of the some of your favorites that you've gotten to go visit? So I only only Ecuador, um, but after I don't, that only, happened, I don't think only belongs before Ecuador. I think uh, <laughs> Ecuador. <laughs> well, no, because I kept getting asked to do it, and then Corona right. happened, so right, I've right, been right. like waiting to go, but why I feel indifferent about it is because like, I feel like if I go to a, another country, I don't want to be stuck in a, a convention center the entire time I'm there. I want to be like, right. Seeing the country and like doing things. So that kind of thing you're, are you going to be able to take like, you know, a, a, you know, a week off from work and, and, do that kind of thing because i we know because we we've done like we do uh av yeah, yeah. for conferences and stuff so we travel all over the country and you know we work for we're in for three days and we work for two and a half mm -hmm. right so it's it's a very i know i know how that feels do are you gonna you know consciously take if i if i go or... if i go to like if i go to italy yeah for sure i will take try to take off something i don't know three days if that I don't I mean I don't think that I can take off work you know more than a week but I will definitely try to see something other than the inside of a convention center right sure. that's the crazy thing people don't realize is that like yeah you gotta you got a job job yeah and uh right you know you're you're working your ass off and then even a lot of that job job money goes to creating these costumes getting these photos done yeah uh marketing yourself doing all yeah. this kind of stuff going to the con you yeah. know art is sure. freaking expensive yeah yeah absolutely i mean i think my i think my i mean you guys know because you have to buy your instruments and your microphones mm -hmm. and everything um but i think my i think my suit my first man of steel supergirl whatever outfit cost me like a grand <laughs> i can see that right. yeah yeah do you make do you make all your own stuff or do you have people that help you kind of do that or do you have friends that kind of are really good at something and you use them um so it kind of depends like i do a lot of the like armor 
stuff that I have, like um, the warbler or, or foam stuff that I have. Um, I have a guy who like makes all of my weapons um, because he's really good at it. Um, I, my my Wonder Woman back here, um, my cousin made me this because he like sells these things for like fifteen hundred dollars a pop, and That's I just went to go visit him, and I was like, "Hey, can I have one?" <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, and then I have like friends who are, you know, really great seam seamstresses. So like I'll have them sew stuff. I don't know. It just depends. I mean, I I, I make like half of my stuff, I guess. But okay. I'm trying to think. So my Aquaman, I made all of that. Um, I almost died trying to make the trident. Like literally, almost died. Um, I I read something about that. Like <laughs> you guys, you were inhaling. <laughs> yeah. Volume. Yeah. Fume, chemical uh styrofoam yeah death cloud. Like the spray like the spray what is it called like the pink foam spray stuff the insulation i yeah. guess yeah. yeah right we were like trying to spray it into the the mold that i had made and then i come home my boyfriend's like drumming inside the apartment <clears throat> <laughs> i was like told you not to do this but like now we're gonna die so <laughs> But yeah, it ended up giving us like asthma and getting in our lungs and our lungs were like, oh, oh it was really bad. we'd be on inhalers. Like, it was That's so awful. Wow. <laughs> See, suffer for the art. Yeah. You, know? you got to suffer for the art. It's great yeah. though. But that's another thing. As soon as you get like, a lot of people will like offer you things too. This is another going back to like a professional cosplayer. Right, as soon right. as you become a professional cosplayer and like get more followers, I guess mm -hmm. people will offer you stuff. So you promote their. You're stuff. in demand. And yeah. and then, well, yeah, if you have more followers than the person that can make something for you, then you yeah. say that they made it for you. It helps. Them. Yeah. It's, which is cool in a way. I, I do like that aspect um, of, I mean, that's, that's kind of how we all try and yeah. work our way up those ladders. You know, mm -hmm. Like, Oh, cool. Now I have this. So now I can, now I can approach this person and maybe they'll want to work with me more than they would have had I, yeah. you know, or maybe they'll charge me less than they yeah. would have had I come to them and had right. no followers. So right. I like that aspect of it. One, one thing I definitely noticed about like looking through, you have your, your website where you're selling your photos. Um, so I was able to kind of like look through a lot of that. You have really, really good photos. Thanks. You, Those are really um, old. I haven't even looked on that. Oh God! I hope I didn't even know. I that know. Thing. <laughs> I didn't know. Well, now you know. I I did a deep dive. I tried to find <laughs> surprise. You still have a site. I hope, no, I hope I nobody's bought stuff that you need to yeah. send. <laughs> <laughs> I hope nobody's bought anything and like waiting a year for their prints. Holy crap! I need to go look at that. Um. <laughs> But yeah. I was gonna say you're you're the whoever's doing the photography, whether it's you setting up the photo shoots or you have um do you use like the same person or do you do you have like a specific photographer? Um so my best friend Marvin, he is like the photographer for a majority of my things. Um and then I have another friend, um, Maze, who does most of my stuff too. And it's kind of like <clears throat> Like people pay them for that for them to take their photo, or like they pay right. people to, for tomorrow for them. But like we kind of have this like we don't pay each other. It's like helpful for both of our portfolios, I guess. Right. You got the buddies. And, that's what I was just saying before. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So and plus now we're all like best friends. So if they were like, "Hey, you need to pay me for this photo shoot," I'd be like. <laughs> Well, they can, <laughs> they can also be like, Hey, we need a model for this thing we're doing. And, and right. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Which and, they have done. Right. So you guys, so. Exactly. Yeah. So you get help each other out. Yeah. Um, do you, who does the, like, not who does, but do you do the photo editing? Do, do they, they do, do the photo editing? They, they do, do it. Do. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I just I can't hear, up. I can't hear the name maze without thinking of Lucifer. I cannot <laughs> hear that. I never, I never watched it. It's a good um, one. I haven't gotten all, uh, that far, but it's it's a good. I think I'm I'm up to like season three or something. Yeah, I like. Well, I liked the character Lucifer from the Sandman series from right. way back. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, Preacher too. Oh, Preacher okay. Came from Sandman, but uh, the series is really really good. I like I like any series that they try and cancel and the fans force them 
to keep making it. Yeah. Like it all so close with Constantine. <laughs> and yeah. Like, oh yeah. Lucifer, they made it. Well, they, they, they brought him back, right? In some of the DC yeah, television yeah. shows. Okay. Yeah. They, they brought oh, him no. in. And he even had uh, <laughs> Lucifer crossed over in uh, Crisis of Infinite Earths. Oh. They had uh, Constantine in it, and the Lucifer character actually crossed over in it. Okay, so in a world of streaming services, where can you find breaking news, live sports, and a mountain of entertainment? Look no further than Paramount+. Plus. With plans as low as $5.99 per month, you'll gain access to the following. Live news from both national and local CBS networks. Live sports from the NFL, NCAA, PGA, and much, much more. Your favorite MTV, BET, Nickelodeon, and Comedy Central shows from past and present. New original content like The Stand or Star Trek Picard or SpongeBob's Camp Coral. Smithsonian Channel shows and documentaries. Movies and much, much more. Go to BaconIsMyPodcast.com, click on the Sponsors tab, and click on that Paramount Plus link. And open yourself to a peak streaming service. That's BaconIsMyPodcast.com. Click on the Sponsors tab. Then on the Paramount Plus link and dive into thousands of episodes, live TV, original series, and hit movies right now. Do it. I got to I got to get in on I that deep I watch all that stuff. <laughs> I I've, I've only watched uh, Green Arrow. A lot of Green Arrow, not all of it. I don't I don't really like any I think Green Arrow was like the one that I liked. I didn't even finish watching it, but I don't like any of the Well, what's funny stuff. is the, the its quality is hit or miss. It, it they a lot of them they they drop off. Sometimes for me too. I think the CW has a tendency to be like, "Okay, we need to focus on this love angle." Supergirl and, sucks. Uh, <laughs> well, I think I think I wanted to like I I, I like the first season at least uh, like no, a lot of it. I did not. I did not. But like then it. like I I just got so I would get so mad <laughs> because yeah. I'd be watching it and I'd be like, oh, why this is such a bad story. Well, I think, you're telling. I think with 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 the CW shows or when they were on CBS or whatever it was, I think they just try and they either go like, okay, this is going to be really good or this is going to be really campy. Yeah. And I think they go, we have this DC uh, fans aren't necessarily obviously yeah. not into the campy stuff. No. Right. Uh, but I feel you got to have some of that when you have a character like flash. Yeah. Right. I, I think yeah. flash there's elements of camp that kind of have to be there. He's kind sure. of that, that guy. Yeah. You know, um, arrow. Absolutely not. Yeah. You know, well, even Supergirl, not like I think there was too much camp in that show. I get really um, irritated about people in Supergirl because, like, most people I feel like don't read Supergirl comics, like, even the older kind of ones, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and they think that she's just like Superman's stupid little cousin that's like, you know, super girly and not sassy and like not sexy and like i don't know i just but if you actually like read the comics like she i don't know she's badass i i think i, I agree i think <laughs> what they they were trying to do is more of like a hey they know superman so let's let's kind of go more that route yeah than supergirl i i one yeah, thing they made her I, they made her a bit of a do-gooder i don't yeah. know a whole lot of uh you know comic book origin green uh green arrow stuff but i find that they use just about every villain from batman in that well <laughs> i i started to think they were yeah. making a green arrow show because they couldn't make a batman show so right, just, right it was like it was like <laughs> wow they this made is, him very batman right wow this is cool if you read because read the green arrow comics. no they had gotham though yeah they yeah. did have gotham yeah Which now I what liked. did you think of gotham i liked it until it got not good and then i was like no i'm not gonna watch this anymore yeah i was i it i was had really rooting for moment, gotham moments. i was really yeah. rooting for gotham I, I i got through the whole thing i i did too i appreciated it for what it was did you guys watch the new justice league the snyder cut he i has. did i loved it i have not why uh, because loved it's it. i'm it's it's four it's hours giving, long it's he giving me I, I have a really hard time <laughs> getting ready to watch a four-hour version of yeah. a movie that I didn't like in the first place. Well, it's 
it's literally 20 percent of the movie that you saw i know i i, I know <laughs> they they like they they ruined it in the th- i i i'm sorry if you liked the justice league theater cut uh i did not i was no. not a fan i mean <laughs> i was not a fan. i mean yes but i knew that this one was going to be better and come on, four three ratio? Clearly, are you kidding me? So much better. We all but, have widescreen t- TVs. Give me a break. I I like the idea though. It was because no, things are higher a in a superhero idea. movie. Things happen Dude, in the air. Just watch it. Just yeah, watch just watch it. it. I I agree. I'm I'm. <laughs> okay. just team, watch team Laney on this. One. I will say this: by the time this episode airs, I will have watched it. They even split it up into obvious chapters. Yeah, like you could even watch they were just in case doing it. it. Yeah. They black screen it and give you the title of the new chapter. Yeah, just okay. do that. So I when it happens, you can be like pause break during every chapter. Uh, yeah. Did you did you do it straight through? No, I took a pee break through every chapter. Oh yeah, but well, I, I miss me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Pee yeah, breaks yeah. are acceptable. They happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, me too. Straight through, all the way through, and the whole time I'm just like, ah. yeah. I was like literally not even. I was like sitting on the edge of the couch, like. <sighs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. Okay. Was All so right. Good. Fine. I will. And I Justice will watch League it. sucked. It was. It is. It's awful. You know. You know why I was disappointed? Because I didn't like Batman versus Superman either. Oh my god! I don't, I can't even talk to you. I Should yeah. Me? I like Batman versus Superman. I mean. I, I didn't Nobody like Nobody likes the Batman no, versus Superman though, but I didn't like that they that they shoehorn Doomsday in because I thought that they didn't need it. No, I, I the problem is I, I think is that Zack Snyder was like, cool, I've got all the franchises down. I don't know how long I'm gonna actually have this job. So I'm just gonna throw all the cool shit all in one movie. <sighs> I I think, but Zach, it shoehorned it in. It was too. Uh, I don't know. I think Zack Snyder had a plan where he was like, "I've got this property. They're going to keep me for this. I'm going to plan this out into this story arc is going to take four movies for you to see it, and all those movies are going to be two hours. So you're going to leave this movie feeling sort of unfulfilled after they cut it up, because he is he Zack Snyder is a long winded filmmaker. Yeah. Yeah. So you watch his movies and it's like the there's a lot of exposition in it. There's a lot of like story in it. And if you had people that were used to that had just seen Avengers mm-hmm. and were like Justice League and they and they went and saw Batman versus Superman, they were like this isn't what I thought this was going to be. And then I feel have- like I feel like they like built so and I feel like the Snyder cut if you're not an actual DC fan like it would be hard to watch because it's kind of all over the place and it's kind of like a lot to take in. It's like, yeah. it's like how they did it with like Avengers and like they took like 10 years to space all of those movies yeah. out to get up right. to the end. Well, that's, that's a lot of what, what bothered me too. And I feel like, and I don't think this is Zack Snyder's fault. I feel like this is Warner brothers fault. And, oh yeah. And a they lot jumped the gun is, yeah. is they were like, well, we got to play catch up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you can't, you can't do that. Not no, yeah, no. Well, but just so then look you probably how... won't like you probably won't like the Snyder cut then because it's like all over the place and <laughs> it's a lot going on. <laughs> I I think he will. I think he will just because it is a lot going on and it's all over the place. But if you watch it, it all makes sense. Yeah, like if you watch Justice League, Cyborg's story doesn't even matter. Yeah, right. Right. I didn't even like know about Cyborg really. I, I didn't either. I, I knew he was like a young justice guy. Yeah. For, you know, and, and I, I had no idea what a cool character that right. he is. Yeah. Um, I still don't know comic wise. I still haven't, I haven't read the only ones I've read. Like I read a lot of, I think I've read almost every Batman comic up until probably 2010. <laughs> I, do, I, like, I, I downloaded, I found a site where I could download entire runs of comics Mm -hmm. and uh and i used to travel a lot and so when my band was on tour and everything i would sit there with an ipad and i would just read and i just went through everything and and man if you read all the batman comics a lot of them suck yeah there's a lot yeah Yeah. but then once once like 
Frank Miller gets involved and you start yeah, yeah. to really kind of get into it. Um, same thing with Daredevil. No, yeah, yeah. Like if you want to hit the other side, Frank Miller is just Frank a genius. Miller. <laughs> Frank Miller's a genius. Uh, but you you have these once you get rid of some of those things, there's some story arcs in there that are just great, fucking incredible. Yeah, right? I I mean the the Dark Knight metal oh. thing is pretty awesome. And then each like individual thing that they went into, and what was the other one that I liked? Uh, the uh, Court of Owls was the one I liked a lot. Court of Owls was excellent. I'm I'm super excited that apparently the um, the Batman family game that's coming out. I can't remember the name of it right now. It has, has a lot to do with the Court of Owls, which I'm excited. What is about. that? Uh, there's the there's a new game coming out that Batman apparently is dead. And uh, your characters to play are um, Red Hood, Robin, Batgirl. Um, like a video game? Bat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Red Hood, Robin, Batgirl, and uh, Nightwing. Huh. I haven't heard of this. Yeah. It's it's uh, coming out this this year, I believe. It's a new new gen game. I, Gotham Knights. Gotham oh, Knights. Yeah. Okay, really yeah, yeah. And uh, and check out the trailers and stuff. It's, it's the whole like kind of bat family and the trailer alone is like Batman sending a message to Nightwing saying like, if you see this message, I'm dead. Right. And the, and it's them yeah. and it's kind of like court of owls and Batman's not even in it. And that is exciting to me because I love the court of owls story. And apparently yeah. that is kind of what's coming into the new, the Batman film also Ooh, yeah. that, they're, that they're doing right now. Mm -hmm which I cannot wait for. I think that's going to be amazing. I'm excited for it. So Court of Owls is a big one for me too. I haven't read the metal though. Um, definitely worth picking up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, they just announced. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, that's what, what do you like? What do you like so much about it? Uh... <sighs> what ropes you into a comic? What ropes you into a story? I mean, I saw this comic and I was literally like, like when it first came out and I was literally like, this is everything that Batman, mm -hmm. metal, mm -hmm. dark, <laughs> like it's all the I, things that I'm into. I saw the covers and they look badass. The art yeah. looks amazing. Yeah. The art um, is, I just I haven't read the, the art, story. I think the art is my favorite thing just about it in general. Like, I mean, and all the, the side... The bat who laughs is really just like my favorite character. I can't get yeah. over it. So nice. Yeah. Just because the art, the art style goes a long way, and in also into me um, enjoying a com or, or yeah. maybe not enjoying, but wanting to pick up a comic. And that's one that kind of like I was super excited about. It's kind of like when the Batman Samurai movie. Oh man, came yeah. out that like. I love. Was like, I was like, yes, I love this that art. Great. I love old kung fu movies. I love ninjas and samurai. You're like, so it was just yeah. the art alone was just like, this is like a Batman anime. This is amazing. Right. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, they're actually they just announced the Long Halloween uh, animated movie. Did they? Be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with How one of the, yeah, the dude from uh, Supernatural, the guy who plays Dean. He's gonna be Jensen Ackles. Yes, that's Ackles. Uh, he's gonna be uh, Bruce Wayne in this. That guy has been wanting to play Bruce Wayne for the last decade. Yes, every interview I've seen of him, not maybe not every, but uh, and I haven't seen that many interviews of him. I'm I'm a Jensen Ackles talker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's been like, "Yo, Batman, me, I'm ready. Let me do it. Let me do it, man." I want to play Batman. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have to pay some bills here. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We got to jump into the uh, the sponsors. You know all about sponsors. So, uh, this is Poddex. This is one of our sponsors. Uh, it's a lot like Cards Against Humanity. Yes, but a little bit less dirty, a little, less a little dirty. more, a little more PG than Cards Against Humanity. You get a few if if you're lucky. You get one that's kind of like, oh, this could get fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so they are a sponsor of the show. If you go to poddex.com right now, 
and use the promo code bacon because everything is better with bacon unless you're a vegetarian. Um, <laughs> you get 10% off. In which case, it's like hot sauce. Everything is better with hot sauce. So what we do every week, Lainey, is uh, we let you pick which deck you want. So we have... Uh, interview deck two we have interview deck one we have the what the heck deck and would you rather there's also an epi episode deck which we don't so the interview decks alive. the interview decks are um interview questions <laughs> and then the <laughs> oh awkward silence right the the what the heck would you rather <laughs> and uh what was the other one uh, what did i miss what did i forget uh, the episode episode. All right. So the episode is like episode ideas. So I would suggest maybe don't pick that one for this, Yeah. yeah. but out of the <laughs> interviews and what the heck, and would you rather, um, what would you like to answer a question from? I don't, uh, I feel like what the heck, maybe what the heck let's do it. It's green. Now we're going to let Mike, uh, shuffle these because, uh, as has been pointed out, seems to be pointed out every week in this every podcast, show. every single show that I did live in Las Vegas, yet I cannot shuffle cards. I it's am so cute. Terrible at it. <laughs> I'm absolutely. It's adorable. You need yeah. to see it. I can't do it either. <laughs> see? Good. See? I knew it. I knew it. Well, it doesn't mean you're a We're DC friends. We can't shuffle. It's good. <laughs> so but, what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle it. And then we're gonna scroll our fingers uh, pa past the cards, and you you yell stop when you're ready for us to stop. So I'm gonna hold them out, Jim. You go ahead. For those of you that are listening to the audio version of this show, he's going. I am right now to left. moving my finger slowly over the cards. Right. To and left. Lacey is. There you go. Lainey has picked. Ooh. Okay. Uh, is it me or you? Yeah, yeah, you go. I'm, I got it. All right. So, Lainey, yes. what is your favorite microwavable food? Ooh. I only eat organic foods. I don't microwave anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because we, we actually have conversations all the time. He, he wants to get rid of his microwave. I do, not want a, I do not want to microwave anything. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend is like, it's the only way I know how to cook. And I'm like, you need to no learn way. how to use other things. I'll show you. I um, use a microwave for two things. I have like a heating pad that I use like on a daily basis. Right? And I put it in there. One of those like little bean things. And yeah. then my dog's food I heat up in the microwave because she's bougie. Okay. <laughs> what kind of dog? A uh, golden doodle. Ah, uh, my my mom has a golden doodle. I'm very familiar with them. So cute. Um, what's what's your what's your golden doodle's name? Tula. Tula is actually Aqua Girl's name. Amazing! I like it. I love it. Uh, how long have you how long have you had her? Uh, she is four. Four, nice. I have um, I have a French Gin, which is a French Bulldog Boston Terrier mix. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is his name is Bruce Wayne, and <laughs> I have had him for four years as well. He is he is four years old, and and oh. I have a boxer named Bane, who is <laughs> nice seven years, going to be eight soon. Yeah, nice. And I also have a little a little uh, Boston Terrier Beagle Bulldog mix named Bruno, who should have been Loki, but do they yeah. do that. <laughs> do they do they live up to their names though? Bruce Wayne definitely does. Yeah, Bane. <laughs> you call absolutely. him. You call him Bruce Wayne like every time. Not only do we call him Bruce Wayne, Everybody but we does. force every vet to call him Bruce Wayne, and we force every, which is the best thing in the world because every time we take him to the vet, uh, they have to come out and and be like, uh, "Is Bruce Wayne here?" <laughs> And we're like, yes, yes. And we tell them all, they're like, are you Bruce Wayne's parents? And we're like, no, his parents are dead. <laughs> but we are his Alfred Pennyworth. That's amazing. I'm going to get another dog now just so I can do that. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty outstanding. Give the full name to your dog. I highly recommend it. Uh, he has he has his kennel, which is the Bat Cave, which obviously. is a all blacked out kennel. that's all darkened and everything. And when you say Bat Cave, he runs in his kennel and everything, but he also has Wayne Manor, which is his uh, the run of the house, and he's got a few beds around the house. <laughs> That's as, amazing. Uh, you know, 
because he's fucking Bruce Wayne. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bane does not live up to his name. He's a big pussycat. Um, he's 77 pounds of mush. Yeah. Um, and my kids, they they would like jump on him and grab his jowl and rip it, like pull it over his head and everything. And you'd be like, yo, that's cool. Yeah. And that's that's all he does. He, he's just a super happy but if he did have a voice, it definitely would be the movie band be, voice because, be because, you. because of his jowls. Yes. Uh, how about Tula? Does, uh, does she no. live up to her name? No. <laughs> she hates, hates water. She doesn't hates, swim, huh? She hates water. She hates getting baths. She's terrified of everything, like terrified of her own shadow. So <laughs> no, she, she does not live up to that name. It's okay. All right. Now, are you, um, are you a house dweller or an apartment dweller? I just bought a house um, recently, oh, well, but when I had thanks when I had her, she was when she was a puppy. We lived in a uh, like eight hundred square foot apartment, and it was bad. I was, gonna say, cause, I was gonna say because yeah, golden doodles are uh, energetic and they got long legs. <laughs> yeah, long she, legs. she's not though. <laughs> no. <laughs> <She's> not, <laughs> She's not energetic. I mean, she is, but not like not like normal golden labradoodle right. ever. Um, and she's like short. Like she's got short little. She's got like golden retriever legs. They're like okay. short. Like. All right, so she's more on that side. That's that's yeah. adorable. Yeah, she's a little squatty golden doodle. <laughs> my uh, my parents' golden doodle should have been named Chewbacca. I was like this close, but it's not my dog. And my dad named it Rusty after like a like a teddy bear he had when he was a kid, and he was yeah. like, oh, "It reminds me of Rusty." And my mom was like, "Oh, I can't not do it now." And I'm like, "That's a stupid name, Dad." Yeah, <laughs> like, that's Rusty. stupid. <laughs> my my sister, was but allowed. it's Rusty now. Now I look at it. I, I I look at him, and it's like, "You're Rusty." My sister was allowed to name uh name one of our dogs, and its name was Angel, and it was everything but. <laughs> and then, of course, after that. They were like, my parents were like, well, what what do you want to name yours after? You know, we'll let you name this one. And I was like, fucking Logan. Yeah. And uh, he like, doesn't he doesn't Logan eat anything like, up. Yeah. Two no, words. No, no, just, two words. Just fucking Logan. Every every time they take every him to the vet. Like, fucking Logan. <laughs> fucking Logan. Uh, he's the exact opposite. He doesn't go berserker rage. He doesn't. He obviously it's all in the name. Right. When it comes to pups. I, uh, I I met a, a big giant uh, bulldog at the dog park, and his name was Tonka. And I was like, that is the greatest that name. That is a great for name a for a bulldog. Bulldog. It like <laughs> walked around like like permanently bent paw, like paws, just like, burr, 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 like. <laughs> permanently just ready to beat the shit out of you. Right. Yeah. It's just like full of rage. Like. <laughs> <laughs> So I, we are we are very much dog people here. Yes. Um, we actually just got a bark box sponsorship. Yes. Which is exciting. So we, we, we the commercial aired box. somewhere in here. Yeah. So. We, yeah. We That's so awesome. we, we're we're also uh, yeah we're sponsored by Bark Box and you too can get yeah. what a double box. You can get a double box. Double box. <laughs> cool. All right. So that's done. Go from the link uh, at bakersmypodcast dot com where yes. you can also get some sweet Bakers My Podcast merch. Yeah. You can get a shirt with a samurai on it because why? Because samurais kick ass. You know, somebody actually asked me because they because I brought. The, yeah, I, I actually brought the, the cards into work and, and I just kind of keep them with me just in case. And uh, somebody my, my coworker walked past. He's like, so what's the significance of like the the whole like the the, the whole, you know, uh, what do they call it? The house. <laughs> the samurai <laughs> the samurai uh the whatever dojo it is. the dojo yeah the dojo. The on the screen right there right right, there. right. and he's like what, what's the significance of that and the, the samurai and, and and i said they're awesome <laughs> it's it's obviously it's cool shit i found that i could green screen <laughs> <laughs> he was he was hoping you were gonna say like you're some crazy black belt or something but right no. yeah yeah no it's all no, about no. honor yeah <laughs> Obviously, yes. <laughs> a, a podcast is called that's called Bacon is my podcast. It's all about honor. Yeah. yeah. Honor, respect. That's why there's a that's why there's a giraffe running across the screen in our intro. <laughs> I found a giraffe green screen running across the screen and I was like, that's getting used. Yeah. That's getting used. So uh, Lainey, thank you very much 
for hanging out with us. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure. We've taken up over an hour of your time now. Yeah, <laughs> it, uh, it, we had fun. Thank <laughs> you for having me. So, uh, if anybody needs to find you, where do they find you? Yes, because I don't want to send them to a website that you're not going to send them things from when they buy. Yeah, I, need to, I really need to check on that. It's making me nervous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, what if all of my prints are sold out and I'm just like not sending them? Oh, my God. Right. You have uh, like $100,000 waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lainey Fenny on Instagram. I think Lainey Fenny on Facebook, too. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. All TikTok. the handles. You're on, you're on a TikTok kind of thing. Are you you on uh, Twitter and TikTok too, or just yeah. kind of keeping it through a couple of them? I'm on. I'm on all of them. All of them. Lainey Fenny on all everything. You know, we got to do with the TikTok thing. Yeah, we're just not interesting. Enough. I guess. I mean, See, we're interesting in, in uh, Friday nights uh, or Monday mornings. Sorry. Um, <laughs> for about an hour. Uh, but but otherwise, yeah, it's live. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's you have to like it's because you're not a Gen Zer. You have to be a Gen Zer to be on TikTok. Right. I'm not. So we're yeah. old? That's, that's, that's what she's saying. I'm okay. old too. I'm I'm not <laughs> we're not we're not old. We're we're uh seasoned. Seasoned. Yeah. You have to listen, you have to listen to like Doja Cat and like whoever else is on TikTok. Right. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. I, I know Doja that Cat. Is. I don't listen. Doja Cat, but I know Doja I don't Cat. know that. I don't know who it is, but I know that's we thing. are uh yeah, we are like we are dry aged over here. So oh it's not, okay, it's yeah. not like old, well, but it's like you know, just that, enough. It's lost on her because she's a vegetarian. <laughs> that's true. You're not the only vegetarian. Well, actually, we had a vegan on a couple yes, weeks ago. Yes, we did. So. Yes, we did. Yeah. I should don't be vegan. Feel left out. I should be vegan, but I'm not. It's from from Silverstein, vegan. Yeah. But uh yeah. So Jimmy, where where can they find you? Uh, you That's can find nice. you can find um, me. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say it anyway. You go ahead and try and interrupt me, and I'm just gonna <laughs> talk right over you, like I always do. <laughs> you can find me uh, on Instagram and uh, Twitter at Jimmy G Shoes. It's a lot of pictures of my feet places, um, just because I find that pictures of my shoes are more interesting than pictures of my face. So why What's not? Uh, oh man, I have so many shoes. Um, <laughs> I am <laughs> I am currently wearing some uh some like these weird like um like Japanese shoes like you these fugu them. fugu shoes that uh <laughs> that are uh, that's what that's the name on them. <laughs> they have Do you no wear them? Do you wear them and, like not like you like pet them good night and you like don't let them get dirty? Is that like that kind of shoe? Oh guy? no, it, it's not like that. It's like the uh I, I like the way that they look, and so I'll I'll get them. And so I have so many shoes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't take care of anything. <laughs> okay, they're all they're all beat to shit, and they're all uh, like I'm a user of my things, but I do have a lot of shoes. I just like shoes. I like the way they look. I'm a yeah. fan. I'm a fan. Okay. I'm like, what what shirt am I wearing? Do these shoes go with it? <laughs> I'm a weirdo. I'm a weirdo like that. I think a lot. Of I have a lot of boots. A lot of boots. I got I got some some docs that I've had forever that I've uh, stitched up because they've been ripped and stuff and I just sew them back together. Yeah, but yeah, lots of stuff. So so yeah, Jimmy G's shoes, a lot of pictures of my feet. Uh, my band is Craving Strange. We're at cravingstrange.net. You can also find us uh, Craving Strange music on the uh, Book of Faces and the Twitters. And of course, bacon is my passion. You can find all of my music, uh, both myself and mine and Mike's on Spotify, uh, Apple, and uh, anywhere you can find music. Mike, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at me, my own self, Mike, uh, on all of the platforms because some, for some reason, nobody wants that handle. Um, <laughs> and also, <laughs> and also, you amazingly, it was available. Band. Something heavy, something heavy music again. All the handles. Yes, I was able to get all the same thing. It was pretty awesome. Lanny, um, your 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 pop punk and and rock stuff will be fulfilled by by my band, and your oh, no, dark and say, heavy stuff know. will totally be fulfilled by Mike's band. Yeah, He's I, mean, a fantastic I like screaming, screaming yeah. person. And the bacon is my passion. Music is whatever the hell we decide at the time. So you know. Yeah, Wait, what yeah. Do you guys play? What is I mean? What is the what is your you're the screamer? Um, you're the singer. 
we're both singers. We both play guitar. He screams. I, I can't scream very well. I sing and I scream. Yes. Okay. So I just do a little bit of everything. And then like when we get together and do music, it's just kind of whatever happens. We, we were commandeered to do a, uh, yeah. uh, a vampire movie song uh, in a dingy bar. B-horror in- movies. Love. Yeah. Them. And hopefully soon we'll get to film being murdered. Yes, we get yeah. to be in it. We get to be murdered yeah. and killed by. Vampire. But they were like, "Yeah, we just yeah. want to, you know, think, think, dust till dawn." Like very grindcore, very cool. Um, very grindcore. <laughs> so, what what would you say? Are, are the, the music the is songs? like the the music is like something you would find in a uh, a a dirty bar in Mexico that reuses their bottles. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it, it's very sensual as well. Very dust till dawn. And then, uh, so that's that's the one thing. And then, you know, when we get the next single that we did was just a very straightforward hard rock, you know, a little bit of screaming, a little bit of singing, yeah, uh, cool. stuff. But it's then when the he, he does like the the cool Foo Fighters and tre- needs tre- cheap trick kind of thing. Cool. And then I just do the uh, I like to scream and yes, <laughs> sometimes throw hooks in. Yes, for something heavy. Yes. Good deal. I'll check it out. So yeah, check yeah. it out. Let us let us know what you think. And uh, everybody that's watching, let us all know what you think. Please follow Lainey, follow us, uh, like, subscribe, and hit the bell, because apparently that's the only uh, thing that matters these days yeah. is hitting the bell. Otherwise, you'll never help us help us fuck with that algorithm. I mean, man, that thing's lame. Yeah, <laughs> it's awful. Right. Yeah. So help us out. And uh, and Lainey, I cannot wait for you to be able to go dress up and be somewhere again. Because uh, that is going to be awesome. (laughs) And uh, hopefully uh, we'll get to uh, see you in person, maybe at a Comic-Con near us or uh, even if I've never been to one. I've still never been to one. Yeah, it's so messed up. Never? I mean, like, so, okay. So so a long time ago, I I went to one, like. Lainey, we try and finish this show at least three times. (laughs) I'm sorry. So I went to one. I went to one at, like. I was really young. It was like I was still in grade school or maybe junior high school, and it was at like the this disgusting motel. Okay. In the, in the, so yeah. like that's my comic con experience. But I've never gone to like a legit con because I, you know, you need to go I, to like New York Comic Con. Yes. Yes. I, I do know. too. I, I haven't do. been to New York Comic Con. Uh, I want to go to New York, and I obviously want to go to San Diego. Um, I've been it's to the smaller lot, ones. Though. I've been to like Heroes and Villains Fest. Uh, I, I've been to a number of of those type of cons. I actually uh, had to be talked out of driving through a horrible New York winter storm when uh, Heroes and Villains got snowed out a few years ago. Mm. And uh, I got talked out of it. I was digging out to try and go, and we were going to have to drive 20 miles an hour the whole way. And I was like, I'm doing it anyway. And uh, Stephen Amell was there. And he was like, hey, anybody who's there, let's just all gather in a room. And they all sat in a room and like drank and like played acoustic guitar and shit. And I was like, I should have gone. Mm, that's Messed rough. I could have. I really could have like had fun at that. You could talk wrestling with him, too. <laughs> I could have talked fun. wrestling. And he could have turned you into a green arrow or something. Oh, maybe. he could have. Does that happen if he bites me? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. That'd be pretty awesome. I'd probably let Stephen Mill bite me. I'd probably good looking him. dude. I'd probably let him. Yeah. I don't, I'm not even because he's good looking. <laughs> Just because he's Green Arrow, I'd be like, all right, whatever. Why are you asking me? That's a weird thing for you to ask. Yeah, I'd let him. Yeah. And on that note, thank you everybody for hanging out. <laughs> we appreciate you. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And always remember to ask yourself every day, every day. What is it that makes your life better? What is it that makes your life worth living? What is it that makes your sandwiches better? What is it that makes your day better, your music better, everything? What inspires you? What is your bacon? Bye-bye. We know you love your weekly dose of Bacon Is My Podcast. But if you need even more bacon, make sure you head over to baconismypodcast.com where you can engage even more with us. It's a pathway to our music, our extra content, social media pages, and most importantly, some pretty awesome swag for you to show off your bacon. 
Again, that's baconismypodcast.com. Listen to some tunes, pick up some merch, and tell us what your bacon is.